Did you know that more than 3,800 power outages reported every year affect some 18 million people across the U.S.? Well, most of the time that power can be restored within minutes or hours. However, prolonged power outages due to inclement weather or natural disasters is not only an inconvenience, it can be dangerous. In this video, we'll learn how to be ready in the event of a prolonged power outage. Tyndall Air Force Base with power production expert, Senior Master Sergeant Herring Shaw. He's with us to explain how to prepare for, respond to, and recover from a power outage. Sergeant Herring Shaw, how does that electricity get from the power plant to our homes? Well, from the power plant, it goes through a series of electrical lines, and it comes to substations and transformers like this one here. Uh, from there, it will travel to your house to a transformer where it's used to step it down to a useful voltage. What could cause damage resulting in a power outage? Uh, smaller outages tend to be caused by localized weather events or a car hitting a power pole or even a rodent chewing up the insulation on the power lines. However, natural disasters, terrorist incidents, or man-made accidents may cause power outages that could last much longer and affect a much larger area. Wow, you mentioned natural disasters. What are some of those natural disasters that could cause damage in certain areas of the U.S.? Well, in the northern states, you tend to have high winds from winter storms or snow and ice breaking electrical lines. In the Midwest, you have tornadoes that tear through those same types of power lines or even a substation. And in coastal areas, you'll have hurricanes or tsunamis that can uh, damage the grid for a long period of time. In 2017, Hurricane Irma hit Puerto Rico. It devastated it and caused widespread outages, and they lasted for a very long time because crews were delayed due to blocked or washed out roads, lack of equipment, or other delays in their recovery operations. Wow, those are some serious problems. What can we expect to happen during a power outage? Well, of course, anything that runs on electricity will not work. So your heating or air conditioning will not be operating. So you have to find a better way to keep cool. Uh, appliances such as refrigerators and microwaves won't work. So preparing and storing food will be very difficult. And if you have a medical device that runs on electricity, such as a CPAP or a dialysis machine, you could have a medical emergency on your hands. If you do need to go out, be very careful. There will be down electrical lines you'll need to avoid. Traffic lights will not be working. And if you don't have cash, you could be in trouble as well because ATMs won't be working either. And stores many times will not be able to process any credit card transactions. That's very thoughtful. A lot of things to consider there. What can I do? Air Force bases have some sort of plan developed. So the best thing to do is develop your own plan. So let's go to my house and see what I've done to prepare for the next power outage. So we talked about some of the challenges we may face during a power outage, but what can we do to minimize the impact of these problems? Well, the first thing you need to do is build a plan and a preparedness kit with enough cash, food, water, and supplies to last you, your family, and your pet for three to five days. So I see you have a lot of supplies here. What is the most important thing to have in an emergency kit? Water is the most important thing to have in an emergency kit. The human body can last about eight weeks without any food, but only three to five days without water. During an outage, it could be very difficult to restock your water. So you wanna have roughly one gallon of water per person per day in your preparedness kit. This here has about three gallons. So I'm guessing this will last someone about three days. Yes. So obviously we have food here, and I know we can last a longer period of time without it, but it's also important to store the food for longer periods of time. How do we do that if the refrigerator or freezer does not have power? Well, it's very important to have canned soups, vegetables, and dry goods in your preparedness kit. Uh, you need to make sure you have enough to last you through the duration of an outage, and always remember to have a manual can opener. Okay, well, how do we heat this food up? A grill or some sort of burner uh, would be a very good option, but make sure you operate it safely don't operate inside or near your house, away from children and pets, and never leave it unattended. 
Okay, common sense, something good to have. I see we have your flashlight, batteries. Do you recommend candles? Uh, no, I don't. They can create a potential fire hazard in an already stressful situation. I see you also have here prescription drugs and a first aid kit. Yes, uh, they are very important. Most first aid kits can treat basic injuries that may occur, but if you need prescription medications, it's a good idea to have them in the kit as well. Okay, and what if you want to stay updated on the local news? A radio with extra batteries will help keep you updated on what's going on. Local authorities will use radio stations that have backup power to post updates to the people. So what about small children or pets? Well, if you have children or pets, you definitely want to throw something in your kit for them. Without power, you're not going to have games or the web to be able to entertain them. So a board game, checkers, or whatever they like to do would be very helpful. You also want to have emergency contact numbers for local hospitals, poison control, and things of that nature saved in your cell phone. So it's a good thing that you brought up mobile phones. What if we want to charge them or medical devices that require power? Well, it's important to have some sort of backup power source. Well, cell phones and other devices like that, you can use a small recharger, use your car, or you can even go to a shelter that has backup power. If you need to charge an appliance or medical device, you may need to purchase a generator. So you mentioned generators. What are some of the things that we look for in purchasing one? Well, there's so many considerations to take into account, safety being one. So let's go outside and kind of go over those items. All right. Well, before you purchase a generator, you want to make sure to consult an electrician to make sure it can handle the loads that you need it to be able to do. Also, consult the owner's manual to make sure that you operate it safely. A few tips would be don't run it near open windows or in your house. You can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. Lastly, make sure you have enough fuel on hand to last for three to five days. Generally speaking, five gallons will last you about eight hours. You can extend this runtime by shutting the generator off when you don't need to use it. Okay, that sounds pretty simple. Is there anything else we need to prepare for a power outage? Simple things like knowing how to use your release lever on your garage door opener, filling up your gas tank before severe storms, and having plenty of cash on hand are simple ways you can prepare for a power outage. So we're finally prepared for a power outage. What can we do to make things a little bit more comfortable? Well, if it's hot outside, open your windows, stay in the shade, and drink plenty of water. If it's cold, put on more clothes. Layer up with blankets. This will help keep you warmer. Also, don't use charcoal or gas grill in your house. This can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. You may want to consider going to a movie theater or the mall or even a shelter if they're open, but be careful with down power lines. Lastly, make sure you turn off your electronics and turn off your circuit breakers at your house. This will prevent any damage from returning power surges. So I know we have canned goods and non-perishable food in our preparedness kit, but what about the food that's in the fridge? Well, the best thing to do is keep your refrigerator and freezer door shut. This will prolong how long your food can last. Moving such items such as milk, cheese, and other perishables to the freezer at the beginning of a power outage may extend the amount of time before they spoil. You can also eat your perishables before they spoil and save your non-perishables for later. Okay, and how long does it take for that food to spoil? If unopened, usually in the refrigerator, it will be about four hours, and in your freezer, about 48 hours. So once the power outage is over, how can we tell if the food in the fridge is still safe to eat? Well, you want to inspect your perishables and throw away anything that has been exposed to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or four degrees Celsius for two hours or more. Also throw anything away that has a funny smell doesn't look right or has an odd texture. If food in the freezer is colder than 40 degrees Fahrenheit and has ice crystals on it, you can refreeze it. Is there anything else that we need to do once power is restored? Well, as you go out and about, be cautious of power lines. Just because you have power back doesn't mean everybody else does. Also, street lights could still be out at that point. Lastly, this is a perfect time to restock your kit. Get new supplies such as batteries and non-perishable foods. And if you have any questions about your medications being safe, contact your doctor. Hopefully this information will better help you prepare for what to do before, during, and after a power outage. 
For more information, visit your installation's Office of Emergency Management or the Be Ready website, download the Be Ready mobile app, or pick up an Air Force Emergency Preparedness Guide. I'm Kenesha Dees, reporting for the Emergency Management Division of the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. Stay safe and be ready.